I want to make a video about diagramming arguments. So this is basically already reconstructed. That is, it's already in a form that where we have, you know, premise one, premise two, and a conclusion. I mean, we can relabel this P1, P2. This is the conclusion. Um, I'm using an example from section three in the study guide just for the sake of having an example. Um, you won't have to do this in section three of the study guide, but here's an argument. P1, all Simpsons characters are excellent role models for children. P2, some Simpsons characters are greedy capitalists. Conclusion, all greedy capitalists are excellent role models for children. If you walk through the validity videos, you'll see this is, of course, not a valid argument. Uh, we produced a counterexample. That doesn't mean we can't reconstruct it what, and, and diagram it. What's going on here? Well, we have P1 and we have P2. And then we have a conclusion. The question is, what's the relationship between these? Well, of course, the premises support the conclusion. That's by definition of what a premise and a conclusion uh, are. The question, so the only question we're really asking here are, you know, is, is P1 uh, dependent on P2 and vice versa or not? If so, we put a bracket and then point an arrow towards C. If not, we individually point arrows from P1 and P2 to the conclusion. So in diagramming, there are really only two um, distinctions to be made, right? I mean, so there's conclusions and premises, and then there are dependent and independent premises. Uh, so all we really need to understand are, you know, that these stand for premises, this stands for a conclusion, and that an arrow means that the premise leads to a particular conclusion. And then if we want to say these are dependent, which I'll define here in a second, we would put these in brackets and then point them toward the conclusion. In this case, so the question we ask ourselves when we ask, you know, are these premises dependent or independent, we ask, does the falsity of P1 undermine the support that P2 gives the conclusion? Now, it doesn't have to completely undermine it. It just has to affect whether P2 still supports the conclusion. And we see in this case, it's like, okay, if we just had P2, some sense characters are greedy capitalists, and we had the conclusion all greedy capitalists are excellent role models for children, it would literally give no support for the conclusion all on its own. In other words, it absolutely needs P1 to give any support uh, to the conclusion. So P1, and the same goes for P1. Right, P1 all by itself doesn't actually give any support for the conclusion. It's only together that P1 and P2 support the conclusion. Here we have a very clear case of uh, dependent premises. So in order to indicate that, we want to put these in brackets. I mean, you can do this on pen and paper, you know, but here I've just got this on a computer. It's just easier than doing a camera, and then we put P, so we put P1 and P2 in brackets, draw the arrow towards the conclusion. That's our diagram. P1 and P2 are dependent. They support the conclusion together. Now, remember, this is all even though this is an invalid argument. It doesn't mean that P1 and P2 aren't supposed to support the conclusion. They are, and that's what's being indicated here is that P1 and P2 together are supposed to uh, support the conclusion. Uh, I will make another one more video uh, that shows you an example of independent premises.